life first appeared on Earth four billion years ago. Vast colonies of single-celled bacteria that would ultimately give rise to all other living creatures. Over the ages, the planet has witnessed explosions of life and mass extinctions. Evolution by trial and error, where skill and luck determine who survives. Today, we humans share the planet with millions of other species. But how did we get here? This is the story of some of the great leaps in evolution that helped to make us human. Until a mere 400 million years ago, the ocean was home to the most advanced life forms on Earth. Creatures like this distant relative of modern day amphibians. This ocean predator is now extinct but its pioneering crawl from sea onto land would spur radical changes in life's development. Millions of years later, new discoveries offer sharper insights into what it took to become human. Science has long thought that evolution is a series of small adaptations that happen over long stretches of time. But now we know that the timeline is punctuated by sudden milestones, like the development of arms and legs. Fossil footprints discovered recently in Poland were a major find. They show that four-legged animals climbed onto land 10 million years earlier than thought. And their fins morphed abruptly into arms and legs. The latest research shows a similar shift in the human brain as it adapted to new challenges. About two million years ago, it grew larger to boost its energy supply for creative problem solving. So what prompted such great evolutionary leaps? The secret lies deep within our DNA. Our anatomy is shaped by the vast store of data in deoxyribonucleic acid that determines how different cells in the body function. Sequencers can now read the DNA of humans and even ancient animals at lightning speed and pinpoint drastic genetic shifts throughout our collective history. Changes that created wildly new physical adaptations. Like the growth of eyes. Eyes appeared in the ancient seas only 500 million years ago. This was the first great evolutionary leap for animals encoded in DNA and enhanced through the ages. History would show it was the first giant step down the path to humanity. The Rocky Mountains of Western Canada. Here, Vast stretches of rugged peaks rise more than two miles high. It may seem like a strange place to look for ancient sea life, but the Burgess Shale is famous for its exceptionally preserved fossils from the Cambrian explosion. Jean-Bernard Caron studies life from this highly diverse era. One of his chance finds up here turned out to be a prehistoric jackpot. In 2012, Caron and his team first happened upon this layer of rock exposed by a forest fire. It contained a cache of fossils of some of the earliest animals with eyes.
Now, as research continues here, Caron hopes the unusual fossils unearthed from this ledge will reveal something unexpected about the prehistoric world. But getting at those ancient secrets means digging deep. This layer of rock from the Cambrian period is more than half a billion years old. Caron's team will have to cut, drill, and hammer into it to find what they're looking for, but there are no guarantees. Yeah, it's cracking very good. It's cracking here, it's cracking here. Oh my goodness. And two, Whoa. the same. Yeah. Here, here. Extremely well preserved. They find six Every fossils one. from one slab same with a welcome feature here. staring back at them. This is lateral eye here. It's quite big as you can see here, this spot. This odd looking invertebrate is a species the team has never seen before. Beyond its many legs, the head reveals a tiny dark hollow. Garon says it's a 500 million year old eye. It's a burrowing creature that once hunted worms on ancient seabeds. Like the trunk of an elephant, its head holds five distinct eyes. At least 30 species from this era, each more peculiar than the next, were test driving new visual anatomy to see what worked best. The appearance of eyes in animals was a major evolutionary innovation. And it's remarkable that in Cambrian fossils we see so many fossils with uh, eyes. The branches of this tree illustrate the evolution of life over four billion years. At its base are single-celled bacteria, Earth's pioneers. Over millions of years, these organisms developed in various forms, finally dividing into plants and animals. On the animal limb, reptiles and mammals would evolve from fish. We humans were late arrivals. During the course of evolution, eyes appeared right here in the Cambrian period. Why then? This new sense organ coincided with an explosion of life in the seas. And as Jean-Bernard Caron points out, that also meant new dangers. Wet the rock and a Cambrian super predator travels back to the future. This is the upper half of a three foot long beast called Anomalocaris. Eyes protrude from both sides of its head, a huge advantage for hunting. This recently found fossilized eye has a familiar looking structure. It's a compound eye with thousands of hexagonal lenses. Like a dragonfly, Anomalocaris could see in many directions at once. Researchers think the acute vision of this half-billion-year-old sea monster might even rival that of most 21st century insects. Summoned from the ancient seas, this avatar of Anomalocara seems pretty tame. Back in his day, he terrorized the neighborhood. Anomalocaris was the largest animal known from the Cambrian Empire. It could reach sizes up to 50 centimeters in length. Now, thanks to the large eyes that this animal possessed, it could see potential prey very efficiently. 
Thus, this animal will have been on top of the food chain during the Cambrian period and will have driven potentially uh, the diversity that we know during that time. Let's time travel back from the Rockies to Earth 500 million years ago, a period when eyes were just coming into fashion. To start with, no one yet lived on land. But the deep sea and coastal zones teemed with life in all shapes and forms. This alien looking life form is the tiny Hallucigenia. And this one with its sword like armor is Rewaxia. The Cambrian seas spawned the ancestors of insects, crustaceans, and spiders, the arthropods. For three billion years, life on Earth had been limited to microorganisms invisible to the naked eye. Now suddenly, the planet was erupting with large, new, complex life forms. At the dawn of this era, the fearsome Anomalocaris lorded over all other life in the sea. Its two large compound eyes gave it panoramic vision as it searched for prey. But it wasn't the only animal that could see. This is Alalcomeneus, a creature only one inch long. Its eyes were shaped like gourds, allowing it to gaze up and down simultaneously. But it couldn't see what was behind, making it the perfect target for the five-eyed hunter, Opabinia. Opabinia had panoramic vision, But even eyes in the back of your head can't protect you if you let your guard down. Herdia looked and behaved a lot like Anomalocaris. It too was a huge carnivore with stalked eyes. An adaptation that surely helped his hunting prowess. Throughout the Cambrian period, a parade of animals developed eyes tailored to their environments. And eyes soon became an indispensable tool for survival. Some used them to zero in on prey. And some to detect enemies and prepare their defense. In a world where good vision could mean the difference between life and death, eyes changed in response to new needs. Ultimately, the most successful designs would be passed down the collective evolutionary line. But what spurred the development of eyes in the Cambrian rather than any other period in time? This is still an unsolved mystery in the story of life on Earth. Science keeps digging, but fossil research to date has offered no further clues about the origin of eyes.
In Switzerland, research has taken a completely new approach to learn how eyes came to be by tracking DNA. This is the late Walter Gehring. He's known worldwide as a pioneer in DNA research. A DNA sequence is made up of a combination of chemical bases represented by the letters A, T, G, C. Human DNA consists of about three billion combinations of those four letters. Gehring combed through this vast number of sequences to locate the key genes that determine basic body structures, such as the head, arms, and legs. One of the most important is the Pax6 gene. It regulates the formation of eyes during embryonic development. In Gehring's experiment, the Pax6 gene carried by a mouse, a mammal, is injected into an embryo of an insect, a fly. It's now in the pupa stage, the pre-adult body of a fly. The multiple orange mounds viewed through a microscope are the resulting genetically engineered eyes. This normal pupa looks nothing like the experimental subject. The fly with the Pax6 gene now has eyes where wings, legs, and other parts should be. A mammalian gene successfully produced eyes in an insect. To Gehring, this pivotal discovery suggested that the origin of eyes could be traced back to a common genetic ancestor. Finding that a master control gene for eye development in ma mammals was much the same as that in flies suggested that they the eye was invented only once. I found out that it's, uh, it has evolved only once and then radiated out into these very different eye types. But who was related to both mammals and insects? Clearly a creature from the sea. According to Gehring, the very first ancestor with eyes was a jellyfish. Look closely at the edge of this jellyfish's bell. Those white spots are eyes. Up close, you can see a black crescent-shaped organ, the ocellus. It doesn't form images, but it's light sensitive. This allows jellyfish to move toward or away from the sun. Gehring believed that examining how their eyes were formed would also explain how early life suddenly acquired such sophisticated organs. His search led him to tiny marine creatures with features almost perfectly matched to jellyfish eyes. In Japan, the seas are brimming with them during the brief summer season, though finding them can be hit or miss. Gehring's research partner, Takashi Gojobori, searches for evolutionary origins by studying marine microorganisms. Now, it's the moment of truth. Their reward 
is a tiny phytoplankton called dinoflagellate. Magnified under the lens, the specimen is revealing. It too sports a black crescent-shaped organ. It looks like the twin of the jellyfish eye. and closer inspection reveals a significant feature. The greenish-yellow dots are chloroplasts. Plants use them for photosynthesis to harness energy from sunlight. They look nothing alike, but trees and dinoflagellates are apparently both related to plants. Like the tiny crescent in the jellyfish eye, this one, too, has a complex function. It's how dinoflagellates sense light. This light sensor evolved over hundreds of millions of years. The purpose? To make photosynthesis more efficient. But isn't it possible that the resemblance between the eyes of a dinoflagellate and a jellyfish is simply a fluke? It's highly unusual for plants and animals to share similar organs. Walter Gehring and Takashi Gojobori turn to DNA for further answers. During the course of research in Japan, Gojobori's team found significant evidence supporting their theory on the origin of eyes. The clue lay hidden in the DNA of dinoflagellates. It's the rhodopsin gene. Rhodopsin, or visual purple, is a biological pigment found in the retina, a light-sensitive protein with a complex shape. Comparing them, the dinoflagellate protein looks almost identical to the protein in a human eye, down to the seven helix bundles. The rhodopsin protein plays a vital role in our eyesight. It's what gives us night vision. With a sample from an animal eye, we can see how it works. When the rhodopsin protein is exposed to light, the pigment rapidly loses color. It's a biochemical process called photobleaching. The microstructure of a protein reacts to light and changes. Rhodopsin is found in the rods of the retina at the back of the eye. The retina is essentially a light-sensing screen. It's lined with millions of cells containing protein. When light strikes the center of the protein, it opens triggering nerve impulses to the brain, where images are formed. This biochemical reaction to light is what controls our vision. The lab studies prove that the protein essential to animal eyesight is almost identical to the one in plants. Gehring and Gojobori were convinced this was no simple coincidence, and they offered a bold hypothesis. で、
、まあ、そういう、まあ、可能性がまあ極めて高い。This was all invented by the dinoflagellates. And what happened then, when they were taken up by the jellyfish, I think they brought with them a number of these genes. And we have used those to make, well, the jellyfish has used those to make a prototypic eye. The idea that genes could leap from plants to animals was somewhat shocking. This was thinking way outside the box. It challenged conventional wisdom that evolution was a series of incremental changes occurring over time when DNA is passed down from parent to child. Then, in 2014, came a stunning discovery in Massachusetts. Scientists found living proof of a gene crossing from plant to animal in a shallow creek near Boston. It was the first concrete evidence of such a direct genetic transfer. The subject was a tiny sea slug. The sea slug is an animal that can survive simply by feeding on sunlight. Just like plants, it has chloroplasts that capture and store energy from the sun. We can see how by examining the sea slug's DNA. The glowing dots are genes from algae. This sea slug absorbed genes from the algae in its environment and they merged with its own DNA, ultimately, allowing the animal to photosynthesize. Yeah, I think it was probably an accident of the way they feed. They've been transferred from the algae, and now they're transferred in the slug generations. Well, as a biologist, to me, the interesting part of this is evolution. Uh, I, I think this is probably the way a lot of evolution occurred. You can uh, change a species overnight by taking a gene from somebody else, sticking it into the nucleus, and all of a sudden you have an entirely different species. Without the help of technology, the genetic leap from plants to animals would have happened at a snail's pace. But the algae sea slug model proves the connection was there, meaning it would have been possible for ancient genes to make the same leap from dinoflagellates to jellyfish. As research continues in Japan, Science has been able to connect new dots between these two species. Today, Takashi Gojobari is hunting for one particular animal, and it seems he's having some luck. It's a spotted jellyfish with four clumps of so called oral arms for feeding. Instead of a single mouth, the openings on its arms are used to snare tiny phytoplankton. A closer look reveals brown particles embedded in the body tissue. Each of these grain like clumps is a type of dinoflagellate. The two species are living symbiotically. If the plant and animal have survived together this long, there has to be a good reason. Gojobori thinks there must have been a gene transfer between the pair in the past. まあ、革新的な進化が成し遂げられるといただくことによってですね
今まで自分が持ちえなかったものをまあ突然に持ちえてですねそしてその進化の大きなその変化っていいますか大きな躍進につながってきている、まあ、そういうふうに考えています。Let's return to the period when Gering and Gojobori believe life first developed eyes. In this Precambrian era, jellyfish like animals roamed the seas. They were still sightless at the time, but they were surrounded by plankton, tiny, light sensitive plants. These primitive jellyfish might have eaten the microorganisms or at some point coexisted symbiotically. Eventually, Just the right plankton gene would penetrate the jellyfish's reproductive cell, forever changing the way the animal cells would live and function. In a tiny biochemical explosion, the plant DNA would scatter throughout the cell. Including the rhodopsin gene. That's the gene that responds to light. Over hundreds of millions of years, life's primitive light sensors would evolve to make photosynthesis more efficient. The merging of plant and animal DNA would be a game changing event. For life on Earth. The ability to sense and respond to light would give animals an amazing edge in the competition to survive. Soon the new gene was put to work. Ancient jellyfish evolved to sense the difference between light and shadow. And this paved the way for the development of eyes in new animals going forward. It was the first great leap in evolution. Life would try out a range of shapes and designs with varying degrees of success. The arthropods, animals with shells, like insects, crabs, and shrimp. Animalocaris, the Cambrian period's top predator, had sophisticated eyesight for his time. Vertebrates, animals with internal bone structure, would come later. Fish, then reptiles, and finally, Mammals, including humans. The earliest vertebrate appeared in the Cambrian seas where eyes were already a familiar sight. Compared to the flashy creatures of the day, it looked rather plain cruising through the seas like a miniature eel. It's called Pacaya. Pacaya grew only about an inch long. Their eyes were almost identical to those of ancient jellyfish. Eyes that could distinguish only light from shadow. But when Animalocaris was on the prowl, even primitive vision could be a lifesaver. Pacaya could sense the predator's shadow and take cover. 
but Pekaya's eyes weren't sharp enough to see actual shapes. So if a predator didn't cast a shadow, he would be literally blindsided. Early vertebrates were under constant attack by aggressive arthropods, animals that had honed their vision and their survival skills over time. But 150 million years later, many vertebrates looked and acted nothing like their ancestors. They were giants. Some were all muscle and bone and deeply driven to dominate. This is the new king of the sea, the actual fossil. Early in the Cambrian period, vertebrates were barely the size of your thumb. But by the end of that evolutionary cycle, they too had produced a super predator. It was an armor-plated fish with huge, menacing eyes and a bite more powerful than a modern-day shark. This was the fearsome Dunkelosteus. a carnivore with razor-sharp jaws and an appetite for anything that swam. Dunkelosteus was probably the size of today's average great white shark. It was the largest animal on Earth until the dawn of the dinosaurs. What had become of the arthropods? Their ancestors had ruled the Cambrian seas, but they didn't have to compete with big fish. This is the king of the arthropods. They too had morphed in impressive ways. This is a six foot long sea scorpion the size of a human adult. Its enormous compound eyes were larger than almost any creatures at the time. And it had grown a carapace of protective armor. Three hundred sixty million years ago, the arthropods were bigger and stronger than their Cambrian ancestors. The question is, how did they measure up against the vertebrates? Just imagine a showdown between these two fierce adversaries in the era's mean seas. Dunkelosteus, the vicious hunter with a ravenous appetite and deadly bite. the giant sea scorpion braced for attack, wielding sharp, battle-ready forelegs. A fair contest? Or are the odds stacked in someone's favor? At this point in history, Scientists say an overwhelming win would always go to the vertebrates. But their relentless triumphs over the arthropods had little to do with prehistoric swagger. The victors simply had better vision. Vertebrate eyes had received an evolutionary upgrade, the next great leap. In fact, Dunkelosteus had eyes that were structurally similar to our own. They're called camera-type eyes. Here's how it works. The lens behind the cornea absorbs light 
and focuses it onto the retina at the rear of the eye. The projection of the image onto the retina screen let it see shapes in high resolution. This was a clear advantage for Duncal Osteos. With its sharper vision, it could gauge precisely the shape and movement of its prey. The arthropod's compound eyes were no match, despite the panoramic vision that had once given them an edge. The lack of clarity in their vision had become a lethal handicap. In the Devonian seas, you needed better optics to survive. Dunkelosteus could grow to be 10 meters in length and weigh three to four tons. Its superior eyesight and its strong jaws were serious weapons. I'm sure any sea scorpion would serve as its dinner. Good eyes and strong jaws led to success in the vertebrate line. The earliest vertebrate, Pacaya, could tell light from dark, but couldn't see shapes with its primitive eyes. How the camera type eye came about is another secret locked in DNA. Today, the warm coastal waters of places like Florida may hold the magic key because this is prime habitat of creatures that resemble the Pacaya from half a billion years ago. Researchers come to scoop them up from the shallow seabeds. If you can find it, look. And out wriggle a handful of the tiny fish-like chordates. This is a lancelet also known as Amphioxus. Shine a light on them, and they react. The small black dots on this one's head are the eyes. And just like Pacaya's primitive vision, the lancelet's eyes register only light and shadow. Lancelets split from vertebrates hundreds of millions of years ago, but their DNA is so similar, scientists believe the two are related. In 2008, researchers mapped the lancelet's entire genomic sequence. Then, they compared it to that of a vertebrate with camera-type eyes, humans. The results were startling. We were very surprised and gratified to learn that Amphioxus has most of its genes in single copy, so that there's just one gene in Amphioxus. And when we compared it to vertebrates, we found the vertebrates had three to four copies of most of these genes. For example, the Hox13 gene, the gene that determines an animal's basic body structure. Lancelets have only one Hox13 gene. Humans have four. Or the EYA gene, a protein vital to the formation of the eye. Again, we humans have four, while lancelets have only one. This disparity was a major find for Linda Holland's team. By studying the lancelet genome, they might discover how vertebrates used old genes to develop new functions. Around 500 million years would pass between Pacaya's and the lancelet's time and the evolution of humankind which means something happened along the way to quadruple our gene set.
For further insight into that transformation, researchers turned to a vertebrate with ancient origins and a quadruple gene set, an animal that's changed little in 360 million years. It lives in rivers and coastal waters across the globe, including here in Hokkaido, Japan. It looks like an eel, but it's actually a jawless fish called a lamprey. The lamprey's defining feature is its circular mouth with suction used to latch onto prey and extract its body fluids. It may be primitive, but its time-tested survival strategy clearly works. The lamprey is Earth's only surviving jawless fish. Ordinary fish do have jaws for attacking and eating their prey. Lampreys are considered living fossils because they've changed so little over time. But the leap they did make was extraordinary. They acquired the quadruple gene set. And once again, the eyes are revealing. Scientists believe the lamprey is the most primitive animal with a camera-type eye. A Japanese researcher has been studying lampreys to determine how the camera type I and the quadruple gene set are related. He's Hiroshi Wada. Wada and his team have spent three years investigating which genes are at work in different parts of the camera type I. They discovered that the genes that quadrupled function are in the retina, the screen of the camera type eye. There are two of them, EPHB and EPHC. The team first observes a vertical slice of a lamprey eye. The crescent-shaped section is the retina. The strength of the EPHB gene at work is represented in red. Its functioning is especially strong at the bottom. Next, the team looks at a horizontal sample of the lamprey eye. This time, the functioning strength of the EPHC gene is depicted in blue. It's expressed strongly on the right side. So, an overall view of the retina reveals that the red gene operates from top to bottom and the blue gene from right to left. The strength of their functioning changes. This was the decisive factor in the development of the camera type I. By merging the two genes, the team could illustrate their performance numerically. They found the strength of the two genes depends greatly on their location. With these two genes, ancient lamprey eyes were primed to identify the position of every light-sensing cell on the retina. They could see the resulting images in extremely sharp focus. Humanity's own complex camera type eye came about with the quadrupling of the gene set and a chain of events that began in Earth's distant past. 
Let's travel way back in time to witness the turning point. We've arrived in the early Cambrian seas where Pacaya first appeared. Pacaya had primitive eyes that could distinguish only light from shadow. Reproduction occurred when females laid eggs on the ocean floor, fertilized with a sprinkling of male sperm. Until that time, a sperm contained half the male's DNA and the egg held half the female's DNA, meaning that through fertilization, the offspring usually acquired the same amount of DNA present in each parent. But at some point, a chance event changed everything. The sperm and egg contained not only half of each parent's DNA, but all of it. It's the moment of fertilization. And now the fertilized egg contains double the parent's DNA. Normally, the accident of extra genes would prevent an egg from developing into a healthy organism. But this time, the embryo managed to survive. It was born safely with its double dose of DNA. Many generations later, the same extraordinary genetic event would repeat itself. A male and female with double the amount of DNA would produce sperm and eggs containing the full double count. Their offspring now had quadruple DNA. It's amazing that at the core of Pacaya's simple body, lay infinite potential for evolution. The quadruple set of genes would ultimately spur the development of a radically new organ, the camera type eye. Thanks to that advantage, some of the planet's early ocean life was able to thrive and pass on their genes while once mighty predators would vanish to extinction. The change in Earth's ancient seas would lead to ever greater diversity countless generations later. Type I was passed on to dinosaurs, mammals, and every other vertebrate. Half a billion years later, we humans rely on our eyes, perhaps more than any other sense organ, to shape our world. We observe, we discover, we invent, and together we build civilizations. Chance encounters in an ancient gene pool would create miraculous things like the gift of eyes. This great leap in evolution, blueprinted in DNA, 
was the first giant step on the road to becoming human.